You're gonna be just fine. I just talk, you know, I just talk. Listen to them, children of the night. Sick, transit, Gloria. Thrill me. Hello everyone, welcome to Kill the Cast. My name is Jerry, and joining me as always is the ever-quotable Jay. Baby's fat, you fat, fat and juicy. Sure, and the Silent Hill biker himself, Kenneth. Yep, I'm here. Alright, so, with that being said, this is our lovely 2023 return, and uh, Jay, how you been doing? Uh, decent, uh, working a lot. Um, hooked on this uh, medical drama on Netflix called New Amsterdam. That's pretty good. Um, uh, playing Symphony of the Night, Castlevania, for the first time. Um, I never played it uh, when I had a PlayStation or growing up, but uh, I picked up the Castlevania collection for PlayStation, and it has Symphony of the Night on there, and I'm playing through that for the first time. Well, uh, Symphony of the Night is absolutely amazing. 10 out of 10 game. Yeah, the only thing I don't line is the amount of loading there is, and this is left over from it being a PlayStation 1 game, but the amount of loading there is when you die, you have to go to, like, you have to watch that stupid long-ass death screen and then go back to the main menu and then load your save, and it's just, it takes so long to come back after you die. Have yeah. you figured out that you can move around the loading screen? Well, no, he's not talking about, like, that loading screen. He's talking about the load, like, when you die, it kicks you all the way back to the main menu. Oh, I know that, but he was it talking about how long it, it loads up like different spots. Have you noticed that it? you can play with it? And where it says now loading will move. Oh, oh I, I got gotcha. you. Have you figured that out yet? No, I haven't done that. Yeah, you can like you can use your uh, D-pad to make the now loading thing move around and do whatever shapes you wanted to do and shit. That's funny. Well, awesome. Uh, Kenneth, how have you been? Uh, back and forth between terrible and not quite as terrible. That's always good. What have you been up to? What has been your interest? Uh, sleeping and working. <laughs> but I did play the Blair Witch game on PS5. And uh, I think it originally came out for PS4. And uh, it was all right. It definitely had an interesting story to it. Uh, it didn't take long to run through it. But I'm just trying to 100% it now. But it, it was pretty decent. Word. All right. Um, I have been playing Final Fantasy IX. I'm in the fourth disc. So go me. And uh, I've been reading a lot. Um, been reading a lot of uh, extreme horror. Which has been... <laughs> A lot of fun. I just told Jay about this book that I just finished that had a scene in it that makes uh, a Serbian film look like Pee Wee's Playhouse. So and then we found out there was an audiobook for it, which I promptly purchased. Yes. So um, I've been do I've been doing a, 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 just a shit ton of reading. So shout out to that. I guess maybe one day I'll go into like some of the fucked up books I've been reading, but. They've been really, really good. Uh, shout out to Chainsaw Hooker and Womb and Dead Inside and uh, Kenneth apparently eating a Snickers. It's not hmm. Snickers. I'm I want Snickers. To see, I'm trying to see if these blue raspberry liquors are still good. Oh, uh, okay. Fair. fair. Um, <laughs> I definitely want to know if they're still good either. <laughs> so with that being said... Tonight, we are reviewing two movies, an old movie and a new movie. Uh, we're reviewing The Hills Have Eyes, the original, um, which Kenneth said we should review, uh, which I am all about. And then uh, we're reviewing Skinamarink because everyone kept talking about it, uh -huh. so I needed an excuse to watch it. So I figured if I had to sit through it, why not make Jay and Kenneth sit through it? Mm -hmm. I'm sure they will be thanking me for letting them see avant-garde art films because the elevated horror that A24 is, that is putting out it? Is, is just garbage. We had to step it up and go to avant-garde art. So, Can you yeah. define avant-garde for me? Uh, begotten. That is another... <laughs> avant-garde horror film 
but that no, one's I from like the eighties. Um, they can get avant garde on these nuts. Basically. Uh, <laughs> so with that being said, we are going to do the Hills Have Eyes first. Uh, Hills Have Eyes came out in 1977. Uh, the the second big film by Wes Craven. Uh, on the way to California, family has the misfortune to have their car break down in an area close to the public and inhabited by violent savages ready to attack. Um, I, was this anyone's first time watch? Mine. Jay's. Okay. Yep. Jay, we're going to let you go first if it was your first time watch. How did you feel about this film? Oh, it was pretty good. It's it's definitely a 70s movie. Um, like, I felt like it, it's in, it's important to watch it, uh, especially if you're a fan of Wes Craven. Um, like, it's, it's a large entry in the history of horror. Um, but overall, like, outside of that, for its, like, pure entertainment value, I'd much rather watch the remake. Uh, understandable the the remake is a lot more you know it's bloody just more vicious in your face gory yeah that's fast just, exactly yeah. it's just there's just more everything i everything i enjoyed in the original is just expanded upon and um uh, i know there's another word i'm looking for that i can't find in my brain but expanded upon and and just there's just more of it. It's a of more everything I enjoy. It, it's it's more of a visual visual gourmet of violence. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Nice. Um, I'm more esteemed yeah, it now I, because uh... I watch Skinamarink. <laughs> I am an esteemed critic now. Yeah, yeah. You need to twirl your mustache and uh, tell people that they're. Uh... Their, their Hollywood which, slock is terrible and which you never watch it. Which is why I prefer the original independent film that is Wes Craven's. <laughs> you Hills don't even like Wes Craven. Eyes. He has a masterful view of the desert and it shines a light on the poverty that exists uh, left from the mines going dry. Thank you very much. This blue raspberry <laughs> licorice is pretty good. Oh, now I want some. You know what's crazy? All right, so you know this has got the shape of like a Twizzler, right? Yeah, I would assume. Yeah. Well, where I've had a tooth or two pulled out, when it fucking goes in the hole where my gum is, it's got a real weird feeling when it goes in there. Mm-hmm. I've funny. watched Hentai. I know where this is going. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, um, so yeah, I watched the. Uh, I decided to watch the Joe Bob version for those out there with uh, Shutter. Uh, some cool behind the scenes information is good is given in the uh, in the interview. Michael Berryman, uh, who plays the the tall bald guy whose name I can't remember. It's some planet. Uh, <laughs> not uh, he's not Mars. He's not. He was Pluto. Yeah, there you go. There you go. He was Pluto. Um, I'm so terrible with names. But uh, but yeah, it's it's a good watch. So if you out there, fans who have not watched it and you have Shudder, I would recommend the Joe Bob version because you get all kinds of cool information while getting to watch the movie. I agree with that. Kenneth, how do you feel about the movie? Oh, I watched this movie when I was a kid. I love this movie. Um, you know, it was, uh, it was another one that my dad introduced me to. Um, really, really like it. I've got the... Uh, as a matter of fact, Jerry, I think you were with me when I bought it. I've got the uh, the Arrow Collector's Edition of this. Oh, yeah, I thought about it. buying it just because the... of its I got popularity. It at, yeah, I got it at Days of the Dead. You know, like I said, I think Jerry was with me when I, I got was. it. Jake, you might have been there, too, when I if bought it. was that one. the one that was like three or four years ago, then maybe. I can't remember whether I bought it at the... You weren't at the one with Clive Barker, were you? No, he was no, not. No, I saw no. the pictures. Yeah, I can't remember whether it was that one or the one after that. But yeah, I watched that. So I watched the making of documentary. So I get what you're saying about the uh, special features and stuff. That's what I'd never watched. But um, like I said, this is classic from my childhood. You know what I mean? I will agree with you on the. When the remake came out, you know, 
obviously it's not going to have the same place in my heart, but as for like gore and ramped up violence and everything else like that, the remake does a better job, but you can also, you know, tell that is a like difference in the product of the times, you know what I mean? Because obviously movies in the seventies go a lot slower than movies that have come out, you know, in the last 15, 20 years. So I think it's a product of his time, but overall, I absolutely love the original. I think it's great. And uh, it'll always be one of those that's in my uh, in my uh, library. I don't think I'll ever get rid of that. I am also a big fan of this movie. Not surprising as I'm a huge fan of, obviously, uh, older 70s uh, exploitation films. And this is right up my alley with it being that nice, like, 70s grindhouse feel maybe not quite as dirty as some of the other ones but it it hits me right in the heart i like all the acting i like the setup of like these people coming from the big city to check on a mine and getting set up and and getting a car wrecked what was he helping to find in the mine anyway i don't know yeah, it was a silver mine. He 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 oh, bought okay. a, He got suckered into buying a silver mine. Uh, he's a, he's a cop. He doesn't know any better. Yeah, he's a dumbass. Yeah, you know. he shot three black guys on the way there. No, yeah. that joke doesn't work. I I was I I was like swallowing uh, at the time that you told it, but I was laughing internally. It was very funny. Oh, okay. yeah, no, I've had to swallow when I got pulled over by a cop too. Oh, dude, this is off the subject, man. I watched this video earlier today of this guy, right? This happened in Georgia. This dude, white dude, standing outside in the morning waiting for somebody to pick him up to go to work because he was a landscaper. Cops come up, say that they've got a, uh, a, uh, they had an anonymous tip that he was out there and that he was trying to break in somebody's car. He matched the description of somebody trying to break into the car. And the guy was just dumbfounded. He didn't know what was going on. And they got him up to the car, and he was like, but I didn't do anything. And the cop acted like he resisted arrest, grabbed him underneath his waist, and literally basically just pulled him over the top of his head and slammed the dude on the concrete. Jesus. Yeah, he ended up breaking his collarbone, fracturing his skull, and something else. Well, I, I won't get into that because that's a kill the cast after dark thing, especially I was just saying I could go into uh, I watched the video of the, the black guy that just got killed here in um, Memphis by the cops. I hadn't seen it. Oh, man, they fucked that dude up. They Jesus. It, it was it was rough to watch that. Um, but we'll save that. But uh, yeah, so I, 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 I love the setting of this movie being out in the desert having all these hills to climb i do i do the the i don't want to call them sets because there's obviously out in real nature but where they chose the film uh was was perfect the setting is great oh yeah it's it's it was it's just fucking awesome to look at i love the idea of being like just stranded out there where during the day it's like really hot and then at night it's really cold and you've got you're, you're deserted. There's no one that's going to be able to come and help you. And you've got this wild cannibal family that's just like going to like kill you, steal all your stuff, and worse yet, they're going to eat your fucking baby. <laughs> yeah. I was yeah, sitting dude. there and I was thinking the whole Chili's baby back ribs thing during that during that. When, you know, like, uh, Jupiter's got the baby and he, you know, tells the woman that's up there to hold on to the baby and he's talking about eating it. And I was just sitting there thinking, you know, chilies. Pluto's baby back ribs. <laughs> that shit was what hilarious. You, sauce? <laughs> you know, when they come up with the location for that, I don't know whether they said this in the, uh, in the Joe Bob version, but, like, Wes Craven just looked on a map in california and he found this spot that was a valley i can't remember the name of the valley and he was just like let's go let's go film there he didn't even go look and then they and then they drove out there yeah bro this is raw like independent filmmaking and when they drove out there to just see what the location looked like you know what i mean whatever after he had already chosen where he's gonna film they got out there and they didn't realize you know like 
they drove out there in a car with like a couple of Pepsis and a bottle of water and didn't realize exactly how hot it was going to be out there. Oh yeah, and it's and then even the car worse. Wouldn't start. Yeah, it's even worse on Michael Bayer, man, dude. He like he's born with no sweat glands. Yeah, yeah, he talked about that. Like it's crazy, dude. That dude is just a beast to be able to go out there and like do that Michael I, I don't know if uh I can't remember if Michael Berryman told the story on Joe Bob or not um because I have seen that version but I just watched the regular version this time around uh he actually went to go see the movie and this lady got all upset over uh the baby scene and he like leaned over and was just like uh you're goddamn right this is terrible and like freaked her out <laughs> He didn't, uh, I don't think he told that story, but he did tell the story about how to help advertise the movie. Um, Wes Craven, him, and I think the producer went uh, to a drive-in in character and were like banging on people's windows. And this one dude got all pissed and came out of his car with a baseball bat and started chasing him. He's like, you scared my girlfriend, I'm going to beat your ass and just started chasing him. And they uh they got away in this fucking van and went to Denny's afterwards and just sat in silence. They're like, uh, that was a bad idea. <laughs> Holy shit, that's fantastic. Good thing they didn't go to Waffle House. The guy would have followed and a fight would have had to happen. <laughs> it's official Man, regulations. I'm so upset that when I came to visit you guys, however many years ago it was, that nobody got into a fight at Waffle House. Yeah, yeah. you missed out. Hell, now they close. What? My Waffle Houses don't close. Shit, shit, they do down here, man. Like the one off the sh- uh, off the uh, the exit where I work. Yeah, they uh, that one right there, dude. Yeah, it. Uh, I'll drive by in the mornings, and uh, you know, because it's like four thirty, and I'll drive by in the mornings. And some mornings, man, like at least once or twice, once or twice a week, they're closed. That must be a staffing issue. And the one right down here, right down the road from where I live, same thing. And then there's another one that's down by Walmart that they close periodically. Well, like three know, of them. Well, I think the audience would love a, a conversation about the closings of Waffle Houses. Probably. I, 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 hey, man, if they would have had one out there in the desert, I think they would have survived. <laughs> I, I don't know. I think that would have made the, the, the fucking, like, inbred clan stronger. All jacked up on fucking waffles. Can you imagine them running into a Waffle House and fucking raiding that motherfucker? See, that's the, that's what Hills Have Eyes Part 2 should have been. <laughs> that would have been pretty Instead awesome. Instead of that boring fucking movie we got. What do y'all think about the... Uh, <laughs> I, was, I, I was thinking about this when I was watching the movie. You know, you got all these people who are just made to look like they're just rough and they, you know, living out in the desert and they're supposed to be kind of inbred and all the rest of this stuff. And then you got Ruby where the only thing that doesn't look kind of hot on her is her hair and her teeth. Yeah. They just add, they just kept adding dirt to her. Cause they were like, damn, you're still too pretty and just rub more dirt on her. Right. You yeah. know, like yeah, they kind of they kind of fucked up on, on Ruby. She, she apparently got that role because she won a foot race. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I watched that. Uh, I watched where she was talking about that. But yeah, that's the one thing that does throw it off is, is Ruby is a little too hot. That's the one thing they did improve on in the remake is they made her look like fu- well, they made everyone look fucked up. Um, but yeah, Ruby is is probably the the one mistake they kind of made in that movie. Unless they were going to make her a love interest. Maybe a love interest for Beast. Maybe her and Beast fall in love <laughs> and we get a whole different movie. Uh, then, that's funny. You know, Those were we got... uh, Michael Berryman's dogs. He brought his own dogs to, to train. Oh, that's, oh, that's awesome. Cool. And then we got Dee Wallace. Yeah, D. Wallace, who, like... Good old D. Does, mm-hmm. like, I forget, like, she looks so different in this movie than every other movie that I know her from that I just don't even recognize her. And and what's funny is, is she's, like, only a year older than the the girl who's playing... No, I'm sorry. The girl who's playing her younger sister in this movie is actually a year older than D. Wallace in real life. Are you talking about the screamer? 
Uh, the one that never shut up? Yes, yes. Susan Lanier is the actress. Oh, my God, man. I, was like, I understand that it was a traumatic experience, but Jesus. Yeah, she wasn't. Her brother had shit handled, though. Yeah, like, I mean, I was just. But that whole scene, you know, where um, where he's like, where they where they rig up the um, the the camper to blow up, and then after that, he's fighting Jupiter. That whole scene right there, man, where she's just screaming and screaming and screaming and screaming. I'm just like, bitch, shut up. Oh yeah, that got annoying. It's the I same was like, thing God, Texas man. Chainsaw. Yeah, that's that's exactly what I thought about was Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I was like, damn, man, shut up. Let him whoop the dude's ass. Did y'all watch the alternate ending? No, what's the alternate ending? Okay, so you know how, like, the main one ends with dude uh, stabbing Mars in the desert? Yep. Okay. In the alternate ending, it swaps to where he he kills Mars first, and then the fight where um, Jupiter and them two and the blowing up of the camper happens and then right after that ruby and dude and his baby come walking out of the hills and the other two come walking up and then they have this big hug and everything else like that and then the blonde chick and ruby hold hands and the scene ends with them holding hands oh that's such a sweet interesting is that on the arrow yeah 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 that's fucking cool. Yeah, yeah, they didn't even mention it all. They, he talked about the ending. He talked about how because how they wanted a bleak ending, but I uh, I don't think he mentioned that they had an alternate ending, which is cool. Yeah, see, I think personally, I think we're leaving out the whole hugging and whatever else, I think it would. I think I think the movie should have ended, you know, with the fight with Jupiter. I personally think that because you know he's like the. To me, he's the he's the final boss. You know what yeah. I mean? I mean, it's yeah. cool. It's cool. Dude got his baby back and all the rest of that. But Jupiter is the final boss. And so that's how it should have ended. It should have ended with his demise. That's what I think. Yeah, because so they, like they could have still ending. had the bleak ending. Right. If they'd done it that way. But you're right. Jupiter should have been the last to die over Mars. Like, it's cool. Doug finally actually did something even though he got assist from ruby and her snake Mm -hmm. um because that's the one thing like in this movie like like there's kind of this whole thing where like doug's the the like more like 70s laid back not hippie guy but you know he doesn't do guns and all of that but you know when push comes to shove and it's his baby he gets up and he like takes care of business but besides a few good punches he doesn't really do that much, and the only reason he wins against Mars is because <laughs> Ruby fucking shoves a snake in Mars's fucking neck. Yeah, yeah that's I think true. I think if it, if it, given another couple of minutes, if it hadn't been for the rattlesnake in the back, it would have been kind of like in you know Saving Private Ryan when the dude uh, takes the uh, bayonet to the to the belly. Yeah, I don't know if y'all remember that scene, but I thought that scene was always pretty wicked. No, unfortunately, I watched Saving Ryan's Privates instead <laughs> no but it's a scene where you got uh, where you got it's kind of uh at least i think it was saving private ryan it may not have been but either way it's an iconic scene where um do y'all remember um um days and confused yeah okay you remember the guy that ends up going and hits the greaser in the face and then gets his ass whooped yeah I can't remember the actor's name, but either way, he's a Jewish guy in this movie that I'm talking about, and I, I want to say it's Saving Private Ryan. And um, so he's a Jewish guy in this movie, and he's fighting a Nazi, and they're rolling around on the floor and everything else like that. And one of them gets a knife or a bayonet out, and he 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 thinks he's going to get the upper hand, and he 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 thinks that you know he's going to be the one stabbing the Nazi, but what ends up happening? is he kind of, the Nazi kind of rolls over and puts him on his back and he's pushing against the knife and the guy just kind of puts all his strength into it and slowly puts it into him and he's sitting there and he's just like, no, 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 wait, 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 as the guy's slowly putting it into him. I know what scene you're talking about. I'm pretty sure. But I could not tell you the movie. I want to say that's in Seven Private Ryan. 
Maybe. Um, I've only seen that movie like twice and it's been a while. But, uh, but yeah, that's what that made me think about because I was just like, yeah, give it another couple of minutes that Mars's blade would have been in Doug. Oh, yeah. Dude, Beast did more than, than Doug did. Yeah. Yeah, that dog is a true hero. Yeah. True American hero. Such real beauty, though. Oh, so speaking of Nazis, this is a little off topic. Have you guys seen the trailer for Sisu, the Finnish film that's coming out? No, I, 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 I'm not even sure it, you just said anything in English. Yeah, listen, I didn't. <laughs> it's about a gold miner during World War II who's trying, who in Finland who's trying to get to a place where you can sell gold and there's these Nazis after him. But he's like this former super Finnish soldier who's like, the, you know, the, the best of the best. Uh, and he just fight. It's just him killing Nazis for like an hour and a half in gory, gory ways. Like during the trailer, he like throws a mine at one of them and it just blows them up to pieces. It fucking that, looks great. That sounds like a you and Kenneth movie. Yeah. Kind of reminds me of uh, you know the precursor for uh, what was it? Uh, what's that movie where they're fighting Nazi zombies in the, in the mountains? Dead Snow. Yeah. Dead Snow was great. Yeah. The second one was hilarious. Yeah, anyway. it was. Um, yeah, sorry. I mean, the post off topic. Back to the Cannibal Mutants. Yeah, so... But yeah, I think this movie's just like a really like fun watch. There's not... You can, you can get philosophical and deep about it if you really want to. Um, I don't think you should. I think it, it's just a fun, like cannibal movie i do like the bleak ending though i do agree that the deaths of mars and uh jupiter should have been switched that definitely does make a lot more sense uh yeah. but i do like the bleak ending i mean and i agree with you i mean you could find some kind of social commentary in it but hell even when wes craven wrote it he wasn't writing it with social commentary in it you exactly. know exactly because like in that in the in the uh, special features there's an interview with him where he's talking about how he come up with the story and he was reading some kind of article about something and uh he read this article about how um these people were living in these caves and they were coming in to the town and they were like uh stealing supplies and killing people and whatever else and then they would go back out to the caves and the reason why no why nobody could find them is because the tide would come in and fill the caves up, and they would yes. and they, yeah, and so that they, it just gave him the idea about what it would be like if you know somebody from you know uh, civilized America or whatever got stuck out in the middle of the desert, and there just happened to be a family of cannibals out there. And that that's the whole thing. There's really no social commentary to it at all. Yeah, he's talking about the uh, Swanee Bean family. Uh, in Scotland. Yeah, uh, I knew it was something like in that. In the 1400s. Yeah. Yep. And yeah, that was it. <laughs> you know, there's no social commentary to it at all. Yep. Joe Bob goes on and tells you about that, too. <laughs> like I said, very informative. I really want to watch the those... Joe Bob just did uh, Necromantic. Oh, yeah. I, have, I, I wasn't able to watch the Valentine's Day one. I need to know the historical value of that movie. I don't know. It turns Darcy on. I just think it's amusing that, you know, a lot of times you'll see people that read so deep into certain things that there's really not that whole lot of depth to. Yeah, not everything. Like, I mean, there's there are a lot and I mean a lot of movies out there with social commentary that people probably don't realize are social commentary, but not everything is a commentary on something sometimes it's just fun for the sake of fun yeah you know and and this just happens to be one of those i mean it's like yeah, if we thought about it long enough i mean we could we might could dive into it but why you know it's not like it's you know psycho three you know what i'm saying right <laughs> or last <laughs> house on the left yeah it's not that you know there's really not a whole lot to it this is you know uh, an asshole with heart problems that you know decided to go off the beaten path even when he, even when he was warned not to and uh yeah he ended up getting you know himself killed and well horribly killed 
and uh, you know, that's that. Pretty much, it's just a fun little '70s grindhouse romp. Yeah, but I, yeah, I, I would say I will so. say this though, it's it's interesting to me, like for that to be the next movie after Last House on the Left. I mean, you know, w- when you watch this in comparison to Last House on the Left, The Hills Have Eyes is kind of weak. <laughs> It is a little bit tamer, that is for yeah. sure. <laughs> I mean, it's like, you know, I was uh, I was thinking about that when I was watching it. I was like, man, for this to be his next movie, I mean, it's like, you know, don't get me wrong, it's good. But, wow, it's, there's, it is nothing in comparison, in my in my opinion, to how intense the last house on the left was. Yeah, the, the only upping the ante is, is the, like, baby like we yeah. may eat this baby. Yeah, but it wasn't like that's another reason I like the remake. I felt like there was more danger um in general. Like I felt like the the characters were in more actual danger. Now, I will say this. One thing that I do absolutely love about the remake over the original is I really like the whole thing about, you know, the blast site. Oh yeah. That whole thing. Oh yeah. You know, I really liked that where they took that and and ran with it for the nuclear test site. I was just like that. I really like that over the original. That's very true. Well, all right. Does anyone else have anything else to say about uh, the lovely hills have eyes? No, that was that pretty much covers it. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, everyone, uh, you have our recommendation. Go watch it. It's on Shutter. Um and our next movie is also on Shudder. Alright, so yeah, our, our other movie is also on Shudder. So here, okay, here's what happened. Here's what happened, guys. Skinamarinkadinkadink. Um, my girlfriend went yeah. to go see this movie with some of her friends. because one What did of her, she think of it? I'll get to that. Okay. One of her Can't friends. Imagine watching this in the theater. Apparently watched this movie in the dark with headphones on on his laptop. Mm-hmm. And thought it was great, and it was scary, and all of that. So he convinced her and, like, our friend Steven and Steven's brother, they were all going to go see it in, in at the theater. So they went to the Belcourt Theater, which is, like, the fancy theater, like, that shows art house films and shit. Um, it's also where I go to see, like, midnight movies. Um, I just went and saw Tenebrae there for a midnight movie, and I just went and saw uh, Paprika there for a midnight movie. So anyway, they go see it, 9.15 at night. Now, me and Chelsea, we don't stay up late very often. Uh, we're a uh, go-to-sleep-as-early-as-fucking-possible kind of people. <laughs> I get it. Um, so, she managed to stay awake the entire movie. Uh, she hated it. She was bored to fucking death about this movie. Yeah, that seems to be the consensus. And the consensus on the internet with Skinamarink is either uh, you think that it's it's the greatest revolutionizing piece of art cinema to happen in horror, or you think it's uh, boring trash. Yeah. Uh, there's really no two ways around it. Now, the movie did make... A, a lot of money in theaters. I'm not sure how well it's going to do for review wise once it hits the shutter fan base. But with that being said, uh, we can do this one or two ways. I can tell y'all what I think this movie is about. I did not go and look up any reviews or any explanations, nor did Chelsea or any of her friends explain the movie to me. Or I can let y'all go ahead and tell me what y'all think of this movie. What, what what would you rather do? Let's let's talk about what we think about it before you go into. I was going to say, Jay, you, you want to go about. first? Yeah, I'll go first. Go for it. Um. So this movie, uh, I didn't like it. <laughs> to, <laughs> to say it to say it simply, um, it's not for me. Um, I don't. I, I, 
I can kind of respect what they were trying to go for in how they shot it. And like they wanted it to be from the perspective of the child and for us to try and feel the fear they must be feeling. But I don't know if you if you guys or anybody listening has ever watched The Office. There is a character in The Office named Gabe who is obsessed with horror movies. And at one point, he puts on a movie he made, and it's just random shots of bullshit. And he says, I wish I, I should have looked this up. He's he's like, is it nothing? Or is it that the director wanted you to feel fear from the lack of plot? Or some, like, bullshit that he was trying to excuse his movie. And that's exactly how I feel about this movie. Like, they, they went for it. They thought they were being artsy. But I think it takes away from everything which is real disappointing because the plot, like if you read the little plot synopsis and the concept of the movie is fantastic. I would have loved to watch a movie about two children trapped in their own house with their parents missing and all the doors and windows suddenly gone if that's what I was actually watching. But I spent 90% of my time looking at corners of, of ceilings and the floor and some free use... Uh, public domain cartoons like it just it didn't accomplish what it set out to accomplish for me and i just ended up being bored the entire time makes sense kenneth i'm gonna tell you the real horror of this movie <laughs> i'm ready for it the real horror of this movie is when one of them little bastards step on one of them fucking legos <laughs> That is it. This was so fucking boring. I fell asleep like three fucking times, and I I, I was trying so hard. So I, I'd nod off. I'd, I'd wake back up. I'd rewind it, and I was I was trying so hard to get through it. Oh, and I was man. sitting, and 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 the thought process crossed my mind of you know looking at it from the the point of view of a kid. You know, because everything was shot low and whatever else. I'm sorry when it really comes down to it. If a kid has not got enough focus to where he's just staring at the carpet or just staring at the light on the ceiling, even when the light's not on, or just staring at the corners of the walls or whatever else. I mean, I didn't feel like I was sitting at the point of view of a kid. I felt like I was sitting at the point of view of a rodent that was running around that house. I felt like I was that cat who just stares at the right, ceiling exactly. and you're like, is there a Something. bug there? Is there a fly buddy? Right. Something like that. You know, and I'm trying so hard the whole time to to figure out what the fuck is going on, especially at the end of it. And and I'm like, what 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 the fuck is this? You know, and and then I was like, it made me feel like it was a movie that would go for so fucking long with nothing going on and then hit you with one of those really, really loud fucking 70s scary fucking sounds just for the shock value. You know, just for the jump scare. You mean that the two it. times it actually did that in the movie? That's what I'm saying. You know, you you go 45 fucking minutes and then you get a loud noise and then you go another 45 fucking minutes and you get a loud noise. I mean... And that's when I would wake up and go, oh, shit, I need to rewind this movie about 45 minutes. <laughs> pretty much. Pretty much. And, I, and, and I, I, I mean, the best way to explain my fucking whole outlook on this movie is exactly what I said to you guys when I finished watching it. That's an hour and 40 minutes of my fucking life. I'll never get back. See, now, I, I understand the sentiment but that's one of those sayings I don't understand the logic of, because even if you enjoyed it, it's still an hour and 47 minutes you wouldn't get back. So it's a funny saying to me. Yeah, but see, I'll never be able to trade that trade that in on anything else because I fucking made a mistake by hitting play on that movie. <laughs> so, so, yes, Kenneth, you're is. very happy with me choosing this movie. Oh, man, I just can't I'm do I'm actually glad that I watched it just so I could judge it fairly. And see, I wanted for it to be good. I really did. I wanted for it to be good. But like I said, 20 minutes in, and I didn't even, at that point, I mean, I told you guys, at that point, 20 minutes in, I didn't know if I was going to make it through it. I was so bored. I was like, hey, 20 minutes in. 
And I love slow movies. As long as it's got a good plot. I didn't know what the fuck was going on. And the only thing that I could come up with at any point in time is that, A, the kids were dead. Which, you know, that was just an easy fucking something to come up with. Or, B, there was some kind of psychological fucking trauma going on because the parents were fighting. Or some shit like that. That was the only thing I could come up with to try to rationalize what the fuck was going on to give me something to work with. Other than there's some weird fucking paranormal thing in this house and the doors and fucking windows have disappeared and they're fucking with these little kids. Which, the like I agree with Jay, the premise sounds fucking amazing. The execution was god-awful. That's, that's where I am. That's completely fair. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going <laughs> Break to... Break it down, Professor. Well, I'm going to read the notes that I took during this movie because I watched this movie in the dark with headphones on. Uh, I did not I go to any social media. I did not fall asleep. My phone was only on so that I could take notes. So here we go. So we aren't going to point the camera towards anything that is happening. It's either too high or too low. Oh, wait. You know what they did show us, though? They made sure to show us that they replaced their toilet with a bucket, because that was an important plot point. Yes, that's true. Uh, I don't understand the (laughs) taking of the toilet. Um, Is that an escape (laughs) route? Fuck them kids. (laughs) Is that an escape route? (laughs) It represents uh, that, I don't know. Um, okay, kid hits his head, no stitches, apparently sleepwalking. Mm-hmm. What kind of carpet makes that noise? How are you going to fake ASMR? Why did the subtitle say, where did it go, instead of what the kid said, which is, where did they go? Because the subtitler is bad at their job. Happens all the time. I actually have been watching most of my TV with subtitles recently because I catch things that I miss otherwise when the subtitles are good. Um, but uh, but yeah, sometimes they did, the subtitler just is really poor at their job. That's very true. Uh, there is a terrible Home Alone remake. <laughs> we can't even put the TV in frame. Why are all these shots the lingering landscape in an art film shot? I mean, really, we've had like three moving camera sh- shots so far and we're 30 minutes in. Why is the mom crying? The chair is on the ceiling. We should be quiet. Something white fell off the wall, naked Barbie on the ceiling, cheap jump scare girl screams. <laughs> you just writing down the scenes? Uh, that's somewhat. Are all moving shots point of view? Dad reappears and says to look under the bed. Your parents are missing. You find them and you are as calm as a cucumber. What kind of kid does that? Then again, they didn't freak out at the fucking chair on the ceiling either. Mother has to close their eyes. Screen goes dark. So the camera is point of view when moving like literally now both the mom and dad are gone again. Someone is here told go told to go back downstairs. Cracking noises. A dark hand. Uh, that's that's where right after the mom is talking to the daughter. Uh, we hear cracking noises, sounds like a neck being cracked, and we see a dark hand slightly come out of the room for a split second. Um, I don't understand why there's cracking noises like a neck being fucking broken when later on we just find out that she had her eyes and and mouth covered up with skin like a a fucking Cenobite. Anyway. Yeah, that might have been a part where I drifted off. Yeah, why are the subtitles (laughs) random? Maybe that's on purpose. Maybe they're they're so they want to fuck with everybody so much with their stupid camera angles and shit that they're also like, hey, let's fuck up the subtitles. That'll be great. Well, no, like I, was, I didn't watch it with subtitles on. They just well, see, they randomly put subtitles there, especially the when they say them. certain things, but other right. times they don't. Yeah, there's only the only thing that the only thing that I can come up with is that is the only time where the director or whatever 
thought that you wouldn't be understand be able to understand what was said. Well, he's wrong because there's a lot of those times. Uh, I mean, I, f- I followed what the kids were saying for the most part when there wasn't no subtitles. There's a couple of times where I didn't, but for the most part, I could follow it. Thanks for including the child piss ASMR. <laughs> right. uh, tapes got set up. Legos getting moved. Very exciting. Stuff is now on the walls. Most of the budget went into double-sided tape. Girls' eyes and mouth covered with skin. An okay jump scare. Maybe. Did Kevin see that or was it just for us, the audience? Pretty sure this is just Kevin's coma dream. This is where I start piecing together what I think the movie's about. Uh, A voice demands sleep. Maybe this movie is designed to bore you into sleepiness so that as you fight off falling asleep, you go in between a dreamlike state and this movie. Or maybe I'm making up excuses to make the movie into something better than what it is. Oh no, a teddy bear disappeared off the floor because of a jump cut. Hmm. I want to play, says the voice. Maybe it's the voice of someone by his hospital bed coming into his coma dream. I don't know. Fuck me. It's still boring either way. Put the knife in your eyes, says the voice, crying blood on a, on a door. Is he just not a... going to look? Oh, I don't... What? I had to think about it because I was, I was, I was in between the kitchen cabinet door with the blood on it. And then it's splattering on the, I guess that was the ceiling or the floor or something. Well, no, no, there's a scene later where they do that. Yeah. yeah. That's the second one. Um, is he not going to look for his sister? The fuck happened to her calling nine one one hurt. No one in the house. How old four, which is very important. We now know the boy is four years old. Why whispering? No answer given the door's gone. Toy phone from the poster. Demonic noises. Too much Taco Bell noises, possibly. Mm, too much Taco Bell. Increases static loudness, loudness for no reason. It can do anything. Kaylee didn't do as she was told. She said she wanted her mom and dad, so I took her mouth away. Kevin, come upstairs. Now Kevin is on the ceiling. Keep going. 572 days appears on the screen. Maybe how long he's been in the coma. Uh, His sister or his mom are there, but then it just becomes a lamp that may have been fallen over. Uh, Toy rings, uh, toy phone rings, cheap jump scare. I have no idea what the voice said. Photos of kids, no faces. Is he still on the ceiling? Blood hits the floor. Demonic roar. Blood went away. Kid whimpering. Blood is back and gone again. Laughing. Back. Mommy, the word, appears on the screen. Magic erasers. Now from... <laughs> yes. Uh, can we watch something happy? I think he was supposed to be asking his sister this. Door, a faint, unclear white face. Go to sleep. Kevin asks, what's your name? The end. So... With all of that said, those were my notes. Here's what I think this movie is about. I think this movie is about the father uh, beating the son, the mother, and the uh, daughter. I think the son has guilt over not being able to uh, protect his sister. Um, I think he probably suffers from uh, sleepwalking because of the trauma. His fell down the stairs, didn't even need stitches that the dad talks about, is the dad basically doing the whole, oh, she she fell down the stairs, or oh, she fell into a doorknob. That's why she has a black eye. Yeah. Um, The father and mother are obviously going through a separation. Um, Basically, this whole thing is... The, um, the son, not the daughter, but the son, dealing with all this trauma while being in a coma after the, uh, father either beats him too bad (laughs) or he runs away from his father and falls down the stairs again and and knocks himself out and puts him in a coma. But I do believe this is a, basically a coma dream. 
for the kid of him trying to deal with all this trauma going in his life and him not being able to deal with it. Um, that's what I think this movie is about. Child, ab- just... ch- child abuse uh, and a kid trying to deal with it. Um, and he's in a he's in a coma. And he's been in a coma for like a year and a half, two years. That's a as good an answer as any. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you know, you want me? I'm gonna Google it. You guys keep talking. I'm gonna Google it and see what the general consensus is. Honestly, when it comes down to it, if I want to watch a movie about somebody stuck in a fucking coma dream, I watch that movie Sublime. You ever seen that? No. It's a damn good movie. I, I, but yeah, that's that. That's what I think. Because what else did the like five hundred something days that appears on the screen? Actually, I mean, dude, like I said, the entire time that I was watching this movie, I was trying to figure out what the fuck was going on. Because the entire time that I was watching it, I was like, "There's got to be something to this. There's got to be something for it to be this artsy and whatever else." I just couldn't figure it out, and maybe you did, because. You know, like I said, I was just the whole time. I was like, what the fuck is going on? There is something about this. And then when the 572 days thing popped up, I had no fucking clue. Yeah, that because because like there's little things in there that to be hint at like child abuse that hint at, you know, oh, like the daughter got her mouth and eyes taken away, uh, you know, because she wanted her her mom, you know, um, it makes me think of, you know, don't tell your mom or crying out for your mom, making the dad angrier when he beats them, you know, little things like that. The camera angles as for only showing like angled down or angled up uh, doesn't really make any sense to me. That's not a child's perspective. Maybe um, it's not the parents. Maybe it's like a babysitter. But there's no other people in the movie except for the dad and the mom. <clears throat> right, but... Unless you th- also, I guess the demonic voice is like that's Uncle, what I'm Uncle about, Bob who keep, touches them? Yeah, because they keep waking up and wondering where their parents are. So if their parents take off to go somewhere and they call the babysitter, who happens to be the abusive one when the kids wake up, the parents ain't going to be there. Yeah, it could be. That would explain why the daughter gets uh, separated from the bu- from the brother. Right. Um, Some that, shit like I that. Mean, I mean, it could be something like that. I mean, you know, and I'm, I'm, I mean, fuck, you know, we're just kind of grasping at straws here. But I do think you got something with that, with it being a coma dream or something. Um, but like I said, I mean, it was just I just feel like that if that was something that you were going to convey it would be one of those things that you wanted people to know that that's what you were trying to convey. And I think that one out of three people figures it out. And if those one out of three people fucking damn, you know, don't know each other, like all three of us do, then there's going to be more people than not that don't understand this movie. Yeah. I think that the Jay was right in like the plot of the movie sounds excellent. But the execution went so far into the I want to be artsy that it it sacrificed any, like, entertainment value to, like, a regular audience or getting the story and the point across to the audience for the sake of art. And, like, like uh, Ch- my girlfriend Chelsea said, she kept saying, I'm so tired of seeing people say that if you didn't like this movie, it's because you didn't just understand it. Well, I watched the entire movie. I do not like it. And I felt like I came up with a pretty, like, reasonable explanation of what the movie is. So I clearly have an understanding of what the movie is supposed to be about and what the movie's supposed to be telling us. Yeah, I mean, and I still don't like the movie. Yeah, I agree Mm -hmm. with you. I mean, even if I had gotten it right off the bat or something like that, I still wouldn't have liked it. You know, I would have appreciated what I would have appreciated what the uh, director and the writer was trying to convey. But that don't mean that I'm gonna like the way it's shot. I don't. I don't. Number one, I think we're long past. I mean, I mean, the level of grittiness to this one. 
for the choice of shooting is even 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 looking back on movies from the late 60s early 70s it's those movies even look better than this one did well this was going for the analog horror trend that's uh, a popular thing on youtube for like arg stuff it was just aping it was just aping that I mean, either way, you know what I'm saying? I mean, when I go into a horror movie, even if it's a horror movie like that, I don't want to watch something that looks like a fucking, uh, a terribly shot fucking early 70s porno borderlining on a snuff film. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I just don't. And 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 so that's number, that, that's one. And then after that, you know, like I said, whether I, whether I understood it or not, you know, there are other factors of why I didn't like it. I didn't like the way it was shot at all. I didn't like the fact that I understand what they were trying to do with it, but I, I feel like that most horror movies need some form of music to move the story along. I'm a firm believer in that. I'm a firm believer in that when it comes to film in general. Um, and, and so, you know, not having at least that in there in certain spots, I mean, you could have, you know, 80% of the movie would be completely quiet the way it was, but it still needs to have a couple, a little bit of that in there. But we, we can forgive that one. But the camera angles, I didn't like them. I didn't like the camera angles at all. You know, I didn't yeah, like... dumb. Yeah, I didn't like how dark it was. I didn't like the explanation of anything. You know what I'm saying? I love cartoons. The constant, you know, cartoons in the background was just, you know, and I'm, it, 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 was, it was unnerving and not in a good way. The only good thing about the cartoons was me going, oh, I've seen that one. Yeah, the one with the <laughs> rabbit making itself disappear that kept happening over and over again. I've totally seen that cartoon. Yeah. Um, I'll also say uh, the, 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 a lot of the quote-unquote artistic choices just bring the movie down when it comes to, like, telling a story. You're you, 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 like you're so caught up in the visual part of it that you're not like doing the story justice, and also like there like is this a paranormal thing? Is it not a paranormal thing? Is it a psychosis thing? Like 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 you're not like clear on any of it in a, in like so you're leaving the audience to like try to figure that out but the problem is 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 most of your audience fell asleep because <laughs> no one wants to see carpet no one I mean, wants yeah. to see ceiling and the thing about it is is like and this what i'm just going to say is not meant to be amusing this is meant to be exactly what i think but it's going to come off as amusing it reminds me the way that it was shot. It reminds me of the exact same thing that would happen or has happened or still happens sometimes when I get tore up and just stare at parts of my house because I'm tore up. Yeah. You know, what? <laughs> the, the, the... I mean, like, like I said, it sounds amusing, but, but it's true. You know, it's one of those things where you just get good and where you just get good and fried and you lean back on in your chair or you lean back on whatever you're sitting against or whatever. And you stare at the fucking ceiling for about five minutes. Cause you get kind of lost because of how tore up you are I or the same it. thing. Yeah, exactly. You know, every one of us out there that that has gotten ripped before understands. You know, it's the same thing when you just kind of sit and, you know, you're just sitting there quiet and staring at the floor. That's exactly what this reminded me of. And, like, that's the reason why I wanted to make that justification in the beginning. It's not supposed – what I'm saying is not supposed to be funny. It's legit. That's what it reminded me of. You know what? The the All of it – it almost is filmed like a found footage movie. Because, you know, in found footage movie, they'll do that where they're, like, looking at, like, a wall. But they only do it for, like, you know, ten seconds at the longest before they, like, move. And you can, like, hear them breathing. That you, and you know they don't want to move because they're hiding from something. Or they know if they turn around, they're going to see something. Like, you have this tension there with the characters in a found footage movie. Yeah, you got something carrying the story along. Yeah. For, so for you these... understand why you're in that situation. Yeah, for I these... just wanted it to be less artsy and show us more of what was actually going on. Yes. Jay, did you find anything that explains? 
I all these articles are just talking about how like artsy it is. Uh, none of them are giving an explanation. One person said, "Is it a concussion? Maybe I don't know." So they're right along the same lines as you. It sounds like some kind of brain injury that is altering Kevin's reality. Okay, so fair. I, I, I mean, so, and that's pretty close. But but also at the same time, I mean, if you've made your movie to the point of where it's that artsy to where nobody on the internet has come up with a definitive, you know, Skinner Marink uh, explained YouTube video, you went a little too far. Oh, I'm sure they're they're. Yeah, I didn't look at YouTube. I was just trying to find an article. Ex- I didn't want to like play videos. Yeah, so no, I'm going to look for that when we get done with this because I didn't want to do that beforehand because I didn't want it to alter how I felt about the movie. Well, if you find a good one, send it to me because I'm always down for an explanation. It might make me appreciate the movie more. Yeah, I did that with uh, Halloween Ends. <laughs> yeah, I wanted much somebody like to... Halloween Ends, uh, I will never watch this movie again. Yeah, because I wanted. I, I'll I, probably end up rewatching Halloween Ends at some point. I felt I felt so. I, was, I, I take felt that back. So fucking. If if I'm having a very 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 bad bout of insomnia, I will put this movie on. There you go. <laughs> it is just pretty much white noise for ninety percent of the movie. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, I guess I wouldn't be able to do that because of the one scream and the one high toy phone ring might wake me up yeah we should uh we should. can i can i do a tag re- the, yeah we, we can do tag a, the director and twitter and send him this episode <laughs> yeah i'm sure he'll be let's 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 make an enemy a, let's make an enemy yeah today. he'll be ecstatic <laughs> at at uh though i would actually like to hear hey his... bro reviewed you reviewed your movie hope you like it yeah oh, yeah i'm uh, i know i know where jerry's going with that and it's just like yeah it fucking explain it to us yeah i would love to hear his rebuttals to yeah uh not only our critiques of the movie but like explain to us not only the movie but your choices for making this like yeah, this give me your vision yeah make me fucking understand yeah, because uh, like, because I want to. I genuinely want to. I want to understand, you know. But I, I don't think we will. But I think all of us agree that uh, it's not a movie for us. I'm sure there's people out there. there I mean, there are there people are. out there that and love this you know, movie. God bless you. I have been watching every time there's a skin and post. I go in the comments and I look at the people fighting and it's 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 always 50 50 it's always the people that are like this is a trash waste of time and there's people that are like this is high art and what i do is i just post the picture that uh, someone made for friday nightmares where it just has a bunch of their quotes about how shitty the <laughs> movie is on, on on the poster for the film and i just put that in the comments and then i just walk right. away so yeah, I don't. I don't understand why. I, when I heard about this movie, I wanted it. I wanted it to be good so bad. Me too. Like I said, that plot, man. It just like if there's a good horror movie in there somewhere. I would just like to see it. I just I, I'm one of them people, man. Where it's just like you know, even though it's fucking clickbait or whatever else. Uh, anytime I see one of those things where it says, you know. It's the scariest movie and stuff like that. I get high hopes, you know, because at this point in time in my life, I'm kind of like, you know, I don't. It's rare that I watch a horror movie that actually gives me the willies, that actually makes me, you know, anxious or whatever else. It's rare that I do that anymore. And so when a movie comes out and I feel like that there's a possibility of me getting that feeling from the movie, I'm like, oh, yeah, awesome, you know. And then I'm for for the most part I'm always disappointed. And then the best horror movies that come out are the ones that entertain me the most. But the, unfortunately, in that, again, it's a double edged sword because I don't get what the horror movie is. Is I'm not getting what the horror movie is supposed to be made for. That's not the entertainment factor that I'm getting. You know, like you got people out there that don't watch horror movies all all the time, and they'll watch a movie like Terrifier Two. 
where they're, where they're walking out of the theater, or they're fucking throwing up or some shit like that. And I'm watching it and I'm sitting there thinking to myself, man, there's just way too much fucking gore in this movie. You know what I mean? I mean, it's like this is two and a half hours of movie that didn't need to be two and a half hours, but it's entertaining. You know? Yeah, this, that is, kind of thing. this is two hours of fucking boredom. Like, I'm yeah. sorry. I Like, like I tried. Like, like I said, I, I wore headphones. So I could I get to I, full... I, I, I had subtitles on and I watched it in a dark room and it just like Yeah, I, I put it I put shutter on the Xbox in the living room and I put the uh, headphones into the into the controller and I turned the light off and everything and I sat in the living room and I watched it with me and the dog. <laughs> Dog's like, bro, this is boring. You're like, holy shit, my dog can talk. Oh yeah, she was passed out and then she woke up for a minute to lick her crotch and then passed back out. Yeah, my cat was asleep the entire time. <laughs> that's my, that's my, cat just, the first time. my cat looked at me and was like, we could be watching wrestling right now. I don't know what you're doing. And I was like, I know, Cass. I know, but I Sometimes I, have to watch I still this. wish I was into wrestling. I, I've been watching it again and I've been having a good time. Um, but that that's for another day. Uh, <laughs> so, yes, yeah, Skin and Rink, uh, we don't recommend that. Watch The Hills Have Eyes. Do not watch Skin and Rink. Yeah, right. or, or do you know? Maybe you like this shit. I don't know. Yeah, maybe you're or, an idiot. Who am I to tell you what to watch? You know, maybe you're f- fucking dumb, and uh, you know you're gonna not listen to us. Smart people I'm, listen to us. I'm so. just some asshole with a Podbean account. Why? Why take advice from me? Watch whatever the fuck you guys want. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> does anyone else have anything to say about Skinnerinka Dinky Dink? Skinnerinka. I'm so poop? hungry. Okay, that's not about the movie. Um, okay, with that being said, we're going to wrap it up a quick, clean, one-hour uh, episode where we gave you two movies, and that's it. So, oh, let me get this yawn out of the way. Fuck. God damn it. So we're talking, talking about Skin Even talking about it fucking makes me want to go to sleep. I'm going to tweet the director. <laughs> I'll have this out tomorrow. Um, so with that being said thank you all for listening we'll be back soon Um, I don't know what we're going to do for our next episode so let us know if you have something you want us to do Uh, maybe a horror coliseum or something like that we love you all and uh, don't watch Skin and Brink Skin and Brink Skin and Brink I love you I don't love you these nuts If you enjoyed this show, then make sure you check out the other great shows on the Legion Podcast Network, like Cinema PsyOps, Cinema Beef, Devour the Podcast, Duncan and Bo Come Correct, Exploding Heads Horror Movie Podcast, Friday the 13th, Get Slayed, The Hell Ming Power Hour, Hello, This is the Doom Show, Hero Hero Ghost Show, Kill the Cast, Underwater Kaiju from Outer Space, Jerry Hates Action, Legion After Dark, Mental Health, Obsessive Cinema, Discourse, Pick Six Movies, The Podcast by the Cemetery, The Podcast on Haunted Hill, The Psycho Semantic Podcast, Rick Radio, House of Wax, Dude Looks Like the 80s, Rabbit and Red Radio, The Shade Cast, Short Bus Cinema, Two Drink Minimum Commentaries, The VD Clinic, Who Will Survive Horror Podcast, and Which vs. the Doomsday Clock. With such a widespread of shows, there is guaranteed to be a niche for you to fall in love with. Horror, politics, movies, books, sex, music, commentaries, health, video games, kaiju, action, news, comedy, and opinions that would most likely get you killed in some parts of the world. We are proud to bring you some of the best podcasting in the world. Check us out at www.legionpodcast.com, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and any other dark corner of the internet where podcasts can be found.